<laughs> it is good. Cheers. Look how beautiful he is. Hey everyone, my name is Kayla Roach. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm here with a special guest. His name is Roy. Come here, come here. This is Roy. <laughs> In this video, I am going to be showing you how I built this 20 plus foot enclosure for a turtle. And then we're gonna go pick up the turtle that will be inhabiting this enclosure. It's gonna be a super exciting video, super epic. Stick around, let's get to it. Mwah. Here's the unused garden bed behind my house that I'll be converting into an enclosure for an eastern box turtle. It measures over 20 feet long and roughly two and a half feet deep. I'm gonna start by removing all the soil followed by this nasty liner and then I will make a lid for it so that I can predator proof it. So I got to work and started removing all the soil that's been in there for god knows how long and then out of the blue my sister showed up with a spider she found. This is a wetland giant wolf spider or Tigrosa heluo and it's absolutely beautiful. It was such a pleasure to hang out with it. I then removed these feed bags which had been stapled to the wood and used as a liner and then BAM! Clean slate. Then I may or may not have been impaled by some screws which made me realize I had to replace them with shorter ones. I then replaced these support beams not only to ensure structural integrity but also to support the lids that I'll be making. Next, I made a drainage layer using gravel that I took from my own yard, because I'm cheap. This drainage layer will allow any excess water to escape from the soil rather than remaining stagnant. But in order for this process to be effective, I needed to create a barrier. That's where the landscape fabric came in handy. This will keep the drainage layer isolated and prevent the overlying soil from falling down into it. I then created a blend of soil that would be suitable for the turtle and for the plants inside. I used peat moss and organic garden soil. I also used some native soil that had recently been excavated from my property. All right, so there may be some people who are concerned about me using native soil. And the truth is there's a test you can do in order to determine if it's safe for your animal or not. And all you simply have to do is... <coughs> it is good. My youngest sister was kind enough to help me mix the soil. Just make sure there isn't any like obvious turd on them. Then I sprinkled some leaf litter on top of the soil. And no, it didn't have any turd on it. I then collected some pine needles to add on top of the leaf litter as this is something that eastern box turtles encounter in their natural habitat. I then placed a large concrete mixing tub into the enclosure. This will be used as the water feature. My boy! Mosquito. I then rinsed some pieces of wood that I found, which will be used as the hardscape in the enclosure. I strategically placed tree roots, rocks, and leaf litter in the concrete mixing tub to make it more naturalistic and allow my turtle to get in and out of the water feature with more ease. In order to determine which plants are safe for my turtle, I consulted the tortoise table, which led me to choose some suitable plants such as hibiscus, Boston fern, geraniums, blue fescue grass, and even some native grass as well. I wanted to try sowing seeds in the enclosure, so I resorted to a few species of wheatgrass. Time to get some materials to build the lids.
Once the frames were built, I cut some hardware cloth to the appropriate size and secured it in place with some staples. I installed some hinges and there we go. The enclosure is kinda done, sorta. There's some work that needs to be done, but, but you know. I'm on my way to pick up the turtle and I'm joined by my boy Roy and about two dozen mosquitoes who decided to hitch a ride and they're clearly taking advantage of me. This is a huge day for me because I, of all the animals I have, have never owned a turtle or a tortoise or terrapin. Boo, boo, boo. This is gonna be my very first Colombian. And let's go pick up this beautiful turtle. I got him! Are you ready? I'm literally pulled over on the side of the road right now because I couldn't wait to show you. Oh my goodness! Hello! And then naturally I had to go to Timmy's to get a coffee, a wrap, and because Roy was there, they give dogs free Timbits, so let's give him his Timbit. Roy's weird, I have to break up food in small pieces for him. He won't eat a full Timbit. He's a baby. And I'll be brutally honest, every time I get a Timbit to give to my dog, I eat it too. Jesus. Cheers. All right, let's bring this turtle home. All right, here he is, we're home. So I'm gonna take him out and put him in his new enclosure. He's already been living outside at the breeders for a few weeks. So the transition will be pretty easy for him. Wow, he's so beautiful. Let's take him out. You're okay, you're okay. Here he is, he has some spells in it. <laughs> Don't mind the horse. Look how beautiful he is. He's a male eastern box turtle, Terrapine Carolina Carolina, and he is 10 years old. He was born in 2013, and he's a proven breeder, and he has the classic red irises that are known among male eastern box turtles. If you didn't already know, they're called box turtles because they have this hinge on their plastron that allows them to completely seal up into their shell and close up like a little box. He has a leaf on his head. Look at him. Aw, this is so nice to see.
I'm cute. I'm curious. Yeah. You gonna go for a swim? Or are you trying to find a way to uh, climb? <laughs> yep. You haven't even explored the other 15 feet of enclosure that exists. <laughs> and he's like, nah, I want to go upwards. Upwards. And off the rock. There he goes. Yay. Sweet. Blowing bubbles. Well, if he gets out on that side, he'll be able to go explore yeah. everything else. Nice day for a little swim. Yeah, honestly, I'm trying to go for a swim. Yeah, right? Oh, no, he's going back to his corner. Yep. Yeah, see, you can really see his color on his carapace when he's wet. He has a leaf on his head. Beautiful. A distinguished hat. <laughs> he's just strutting his stuff across this 20 foot enclosure. Gosh, you're so pretty. Hello. The day also happens to be World Turtle Day. Oh look, a jumping spider caught a bug. Looks like a zebra jumping spider. Yep. Since I haven't screwed the lids onto the hinges yet, I will use this as an opportunity to give you a clear view of the entire setup. Right above the enclosure, there's this beautiful tree, which is very convenient because it offers some dappled sunlight and shade for the turtle. Let's start from the right side here and then I'll move over to the left. So there I have some Elijah blue fescue grass. Then I just have some grass that I pulled out of my yard. Then I have this large concrete mixing tub as a swimming area and there's rocks and roots and branches to help him get in and out easily. And then there's leaf litter at the bottom. Moving on to the next section, we have these tree roots here that offer two little hides. This one here that I have a bunch of sphagnum moss in. And then there's another one in here. Then I have some geraniums at the back there. Moving over to the next section, we have this really big log that's propped up with another tree root and there's tons of hiding space under here. So he can enter from here, from there, and from the side here. And then that's a hibiscus plant that is soon going to bloom. Moving over to the last section here, I have this flat stone which I will be feeding him on to help keep his nails and beak in check and then this is a nice Boston fern that offers a lot of cover with all of the foliage and he's currently hiding here checking out the strawberry I just gave him. I think I'm gonna add a small water dish here with water that I will change every single day so he has access to clean fresh water and then the water feature over here will kind of, I'll kind of just let it do its thing. My idea here was more to mimic a small water source or a vernal pool that he would maybe encounter in the wild. So it does have, you know, leaves in it, some dead bugs and tannins from the leaves and stuff. 
which won't harm him, but I still want to offer him some clean, fresh drinking water. So I'll probably add that over there. Outside of that, all these rocks are going to go. It's just not aesthetically pleasing and very inconvenient to walk around. So I'll probably just put some mulch there and call it a day. Something else I plan on doing is buying a camera that connects to my phone and installing it on the side of the house there just so that I can monitor what's going on. I'm not necessarily going to be able to see him very well, but if there are any predators who try to get in, I can catch them red-handed and get some cool footage or, you know, just for that extra peace of mind while I'm not here. And here's how it looks with all the lids on. I'm very pleased with how it turned out. I still have to screw them onto the hinges and add some handles to each lid and locks and latches to make sure it's nice and secure, but you get the idea. I have a few superworms with some calcium powder with vitamin D3, and we'll see if he's interested. I don't know if he's in the mood, but... Oh, look at him. He's looking at them. Oh, he mad. He like, get back over here, you little superworm. Get in my belly. Bad day to be a superworm. Superworm debilitator 3000. I don't know if he'd be interested in carrot right now. He's, he's looking at it. It's like, what the hell, mom? What is this? Wait a minute. You gonna eat a carrot? He's eating it. Good boy, eating your veggies. Oh, he's so cute. There we go, he got a little piece. See if he wants some nice Canadian night collars. Horse, do you mind? Let me get your worms. Forbidden spaghetti. There we go. We'll leave him with his little dinner plate. Looky here. The hibiscus flowers are starting to bloom. Look how well it's growing in already. The grass is just taking off already. The geraniums are shooting out new flowers. We've got the hibiscus that's going into bloom. Look, look, look at this. I planted this myself with seeds. Oh my goodness. He's underwater. That's so cool. He's submerged underwater. 
And this is why eastern box turtles need a water feature. Although they are mainly terrestrial, they have a great relationship with water. My turtle also doesn't have a name yet. That's a problem. He needs a name. So if you have any name suggestions, be sure to drop those in the comments. Help a girl out, okay? I'm usually... Horse, do you mind? Anyways, if you have name suggestions, drop them in the comment section. You know how it goes. Blah, blah, blah. Thank you. Bye. So that's going to do it for this video. Obviously, stay tuned for more updates on this enclosure because it's not even finished. I didn't even screw the lids on yet. I still have to add another water feature on the other side of the enclosure. I want to add more plants so he has more cover. He really likes his Boston fern, so I'll add more of those. I want to keep you updated as the enclosure grows in. So there'll be kind of routine updates on this setup. So stay tuned, be sure to subscribe, hit that little notification bell, do all those annoying things that all the YouTube content creators ask you to do, but it really helps, so please do it anyways. Take care, enjoy the sunshine, and I'll see you in the next one.